Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the World Dental Council's World Implantology Summit 2020. So those of you who were with us yesterday, I very much hope you enjoyed yesterday's session. Um, for those who weren't here yesterday, my name's Andrew Hobbs. I'm your host from the World Dental Council. And so if you were with us yesterday, just bear with me just while I run through a short introduction about the World Dental Council and their work, which you will have heard if you were with us yesterday. But if you weren't, we'd very much like you to be aware. So um, this is the virtual summit for the World Implantology Summit 2020, hosted by the World Dental Council of International Implantologists. And we're also delighted to have it sponsored by Europe's leading dental implant brand, IDC Dental Implants, and also Antea SRL from Italy. So the World Dental Council is a registered premium international non-profit membership organization, which was founded with a vision to promote dentistry around the globe, managed by WDC Dental Research Council and Association. We've got over 4,000 international dentists under each speciality of dentistry, and the WDC provide international memberships for qualified dentists and accreditation for universities and dental hospitals around the globe to connect, communicate, network, and excel. So Dr. Charin Latha, who is a leading entrepreneur and dental surgeon, is the president of the World Dental Council, and Dr. Andrea Tedesco, who is the leading zygomatic implantologist and dental surgeon, is the vice president of the World Dental Council. It comprises eight speciality councils, which are implantologists, orthodontists, prosthodontists, endodontists, oral and maxillofacial surgeons, periodontists, digital dentistry, and aesthetic dentistry. And today it is the World Dental Council of International Implantologists which are very proud to host this three-day webinar series with renowned international implantologists from Italy, Egypt, and Brazil. So our sincere thanks to all of the 500 plus dentists who have registered from around the globe. It's fantastic to have you with us. And don't forget that your verified CPZ certificate link will be sent to all of the registered participants at the end of the summit. And if you're not yet a member, of the World Dental Council, please do visit worlddentalcouncil.net and be a part of this global mission. So it's my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker. Um, if you do have any questions, please do share them using the Q&A function in this webinar and um, we'll address those at the end. So our first speaker, he's a renowned implantologist from Egypt. He completed his dental degree from Cairo University in 1986. He's a lecturer in the Faculty of Dentistry at Alminia University in Egypt. He's a senior consultant of oral and dental medicine by the Ministry of Health in Egypt. And he's a senior international clinical consultant to several European dental manufacturers. So speaking to us today on D4 and D5, a solved challenge. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome Dr. Atef Ismail. Thank you very much. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you very much for uh, for all the people uh, behind this webinar. And uh, I am really happy that I am a member for these webinars to, to introduce something we can share together. Uh, actually, uh, um, we can start. Uh, 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 we are in very bad situations uh, the last three months. People are staying home and we're afraid and so on and so on. But actually, the most important point for us to have a positive energy in this uh, time that we can uh, uh, receive some good energy got positive energy, the most positive energy we can receive is that we can receive new information or share experience together. This is actually very important for us now in this moment, and I hope for all people to be safe and for all people sick to cure soon. Anyway, 
uh, today we are going to talk about uh, our topic about D4, D5 uh, is solving the challenge. Okay. 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 Really, uh, uh, really, let's start from the first. It's very important the question we receive every day from our patients. My patient is coming uh, seeking a treatment, and the main the main question we receive it when they are uh, introducing an implant industry and, uh, or implant therapy as uh, a line of treatment, the patient always said, how long will the implant last, my doctor? This is actually important question. Now, most of the dentists are having in that one answer, implant for life. Actually, uh, this is a challenge for us to say uh, this uh, answer because uh, for life, we still have a, a lot of a challenge to say that. In this lecture, we will try to uh, explore what is the challenge we have and uh, uh, what uh, uh, we, uh, we prepare to solve this challenge. We will go in this lecture uh, to define uh, starting from the era, from first era of starting the, with the implant dentistry, people seeking uh, or the dentist seeking for the bone volume. Bone volume is important because if I have a good volume of bones, that uh, this means that we have a challenge. Uh, we have a, a possibility to insert a long implants. We have a possibility of uh, a strong anchorage of bone. We have a, a, a possibility to have a, a, a good restoration. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, people thinking that they have, yes, don't have a, a lot of failures or some failures. So we still have a challenge. They seeking a, a new concept that we must uh, make our implant by prosthetic driven direction. And uh, uh, they develop a lot of issues uh, because we have a reduced volume. So uh, short implants working, uh, some techniques, uh, to splitting and so on, so but we still have challenges. And the recent is uh, the introducing the computer uh, uh, driven uh, therapy, okay, the implant therapy, and we still have a challenge. The actual uh, process uh, uh, for implant therapy that we must focus in the most important point that we will must deal with that that. Uh, uh, the, uh, the main key of, uh, uh, of implant therapy is to respect the biology, okay, the substrate. In this lecture, we will focus on the why we have this challenge. Uh, we, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can go to the uh, 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 divination for the bone dynasty, what is the classification of bone dynasty, what, uh, why do we have such failure rate in D4 and D5? What is the component of the successful implant therapy? What is the concepts of management to overcome all these challenges? Let's start with it. This is actually the learning objective. Uh, uh, are the D4 and D5 qualities, uh, bone qualities is a challenge in implant therapy? We try bridging the biology and the mechanics to overcome this challenge with a new concept. We try to understand how to develop, develop an acceptable implant site, biologically accepted implant uh, uh, site, in compromise site. Let us start with this challenge. This uh, patient is coming for us uh, 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 if, you, if you look for this case, patient having an implant long time, and this patient is uh, uh, happy by the implants, uh, it's uh, doing this implant more than 12 years, maybe more, 
okay? It's coming from Germany. The accent is very uh, old time, and this is very good one, and uh, have this uh, situation. And we just, uh, uh, we just wanted to, to take an impression, and you can see the input is go out by that, just by impressions. So the question here, that why the implants have such a type of uh, implant for life? Because the dentist said for him, this is the implant for life. And after a long time, it can make function, and they have these results. If we go deep in the x-ray, we can see it's almost we can have bone. Conscious absorption around the bone, the buccal bone is totally lost. And even the baby area, we have a loss of bone and even in the relative area. So this is considered a challenge for us actually to have such a situation. We don't actually, actually you have the, the right answer for the, my patient, for our patient, because we always said for our patient, the implant is a, is a, a solution for life. If we go to another patient, this patient is coming from Kuwait and they have this uh, restoration and he enjoying the restoration until certain time. This is not so long. And uh, he's coming with a, just to, he, I wanted to fix uh, my restoration. I have a lostness in my restoration. But we just uh, afraid, okay, we can see, we can take an, just an impression to have, if we have any problem, to make a temporary or something like that, to make a study cost, to do something like that, so you can see what happened. The implant with the restoration is coming out like that. So this is for the patient, he received the same answer that he, he had a final restoration for life. So this is also considered a challenge for us. We must have the right answer for the for patients why you have such condition. The common challenge we receive every day now uh, from starting with implant therapy, this patient is often coming to our clinic now. People coming with, after uh, uh, rapid performance, immediate function loading, just uh, eight months, and they have one year maximum, and they have such conditions. It's very difficult situation for the patient, very difficult situation for the dentist because it's not so easy to treat such condition in a simple way. And we need excessive and intensive work to restore these with no guarantee that we can have a, a, what the patient look for. So, what, let us ask, uh, asking ourselves, why are these considered a challenge? Why this type of failures consider a challenge? Or why we have such uh, uh, this considered as a challenge? Because simply over the years, several clinical reports observing a high success rate in the better bone quality and lower survival rate on poor bone quality. Actually, I can tell you, even in a good bone quality, we have a lot of uh, uh, a challenge, uh, not only in the, in the bad bone quality. That's why we must consider that we're facing uh, actually a real issue. If we're facing uh, a challenge in a, a, a good quality bone, supposed to be a good quality bone, and what, the, what, the, what, what would happen if we are speaking about a compromised bone? So if we have a look <coughs> together in many research observing uh, that, for example, 78% of all reported implant failure were, were in the soft bone of the field implant, okay? 66% of the group of implant failure occur in the resorbent maxilla with soft bone. In a five year study reporting 45% implant failure in poor bone density was observed in maxilla. Another research 3% failure of implant in moderate bone 
ball density, but 28 implant failure were in poor bone quality type. So this is why we have a challenge because we have a lot of failure in the, in general, if we have a, 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 some degree of uh, failures, but in poor bone quality, we have more failure. This is actually really challenging. So the question here, let us speak our, with ourselves. This is uh, a challenge for these failures. We must know what behind this uh, challenge to understand how we can focus to solve this uh, problem or this challenge. Before we go far in deep in that, uh, we must know what is the bone and consensus for what uh, and what is the classification and in what basis they make it. You know, from a long time, people were speaking in the uh, bone as internal structure and external structure. The bone volume is essential and the bone quality or the bone density represented by the bone density is very important, okay? People are starting to focus in the uh, substrate on the side, okay? Uh, receiving in the intent, why? Because this is a crucial factor in everything for the treatment plan. Let us go to the, the bone density classifications to understand from long time, uh, many researchers make different classifications for uh, bone quality or for bone density uh, to serve in uh, treatment plan and the choice the right implants and the choice the right treatment plan. The first classifications were starting with Lenico and uh, uh, in these classifications, they make a classification of class one, class two, class three. Class one, he described that this ideal bone, which is really spaced rapidly with a small cancellous bone inside spaces, okay? Class two, bone structure, the bone has a slightly larger cancellous spaces with less ununiformity of bone osseous data. Class three, bone structures, large marrow field spaces exist, exist uh, is between the bone trabric. Lenikos said that the class bone, bone is a bone with the most ideal foundation for implant procedures. Class two bone is more satisfactory, was more satisfactory for implant, and the class three bone is a loose fitting the implant. This means that in the long times that we are they facing a lot of problems concerning the bone quality. Zarb describe another classification, four type of classification, quality number one, quality number two, quality number three, quality number four. Quality number one, which is composed of homogeneous compact bone, quality number two, which is com which is consists of uh, has a thick layer of cortical bone surrounding the dense bone trapezoid, and plus or Quality number three, and a cell layer, a cell layer of cortical bone surrounding a dense bone tropically favorable with a favorable lens. Quality number four has a very cell layer of cortical bone surrounded, surrounding a core of low density bone tropically bone. This is very important to understand this classification because why? Because during a, a treatment plan, uh, even in the past, we're making uh, this classification to understand the, uh, the relation of this classification with the location of the, uh, or the site we are going to insert the implants, okay? The classification of mesh classification bone density, which is very important to know that, they classify the bone D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. 
The main category is D1, D2, D3, D4. Uh, the D1 is a dense cortical bone. You can find it in the anterior mandible. The D2, you can uh, uh, found it in the anterior mandible, in the posterior mandible, and also in the anterior maxilla, some cases. Okay, uh, uh, and this is, you can see, it is urus cortical bone and coarse bone trabecchi. Okay, D3, you can see here, we, uh, you can see it in the anterior maxilla and also in the posterior, in posterior maxilla, okay? Borus cortical or thin cortical plate of bone with a fine trabecchi. And D4, you can see a fine trabecchi bone in the posterior maxilla we can find. D5, it describes the D5 as a very soft bone with incomplete mineralization, large intertrabecular spaces may be addressed as a D, D5. It's always, you can find the D5 bone in the immature bone in the volume science if the grafting or something like that. Okay, that's a question here. Uh, there is another classification, uh, uh, really graphic classifications, which is very important for us now with the uh, 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 development of the CT. Uh, in the past, we always using the, uh, the panoramic and uh, pre radiograph, which is not very beneficial to determine on density. That's why, because the lateral cortical plate of bone uh, uh, always ob obscure the trabecular bone density. Okay. In the radiographic, they divided D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. Uh, uh, in the computer demography, we do an axial imaging of, of the patient anatomy perpendicular to the long axis of the body. Each CT axial have a 260,000 pixel, and each pixel has a CT number, Hounsfield number or unit related to the density of the tissue with the, within the bit. In general, and when the CT number increases, the denser the tissues. And they make this classification D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. Okay, the issue for, uh, uh, for this, uh, the question here that these classifications, the basic classification representing a physiological classification or describe a pathological event or pathological case. It's really uh, described a physiological because it is quite normal to have, it's quite normal to have a D4, D3, D5, a no normal dentition. So this is very important to understand this point. If we have a D1 or D2 bone in the upper uh, 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 posterior maxilla, it is considered a problem. Okay? So we must, uh, we must know that uh, this classification, uh, classification just describe a physiological or normal biology, and we must fit this biology. Okay? So we have a challenge that we have this uh, uh, biology, and we must understand how this work, otherwise we cannot, uh, uh, we will perform the same procedure and we gain the same results, okay? In some cases, these classifications describe uh, some, we uh, as a dentist, we induce, in some cases we induce, which is the wrong quality of the patient due to uh, maltreatment or mal, uh, uh, way of manipulation of the bone. Okay? That's why it's very important to know that this issue is very important to, uh, to consider in our, uh, in our mind. Okay? The question now, so why do we have a higher failure rate in the D4 and D5 bone quality? To answer this question, actually, we must understand the three main concepts. The D4 and D5, as we mentioned before, uh, uh, the half, the highest rate of uh, implant failure, okay? 
uh, if we have some failure in the inside the other bone qualities, but uh, in the D4 and D5, we have the most uh, uh, highest inequalities. So we must understand something for, to understand why we have such type of failure. We must uh, make a stress on that, what is called the elastic model of elasticity, bone implant contact, and stress transfer. We start to one by one to understand how, how it works with us. The elastic model is of elasticity, you know, the strength of the bone is, uh, uh, is very important, okay? Uh, uh, and it is affected by the type of bone, okay? The elastic model is of elasticity is the amount of the strain, the amount of the strain change of the strain is considered a change of the length divided by the original inch. How we can uh, understand this? I try to, to, to explain, explain it by a very simple way, okay? The elastic model of elasticity, as we mentioned before here, is the, the, the change, okay? The amount of the strain, the change in length divided by the origin, original lens, okay? Uh, if we go to the different type, we have D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, and we insert in titanium. The elastic modulus of elasticity between the titanium uh, the, the elastic modulus of the elasticity between the titanium and different type of bone is completely different. Okay, so we, when we insert our implant, when the higher stress is applied to the implant processes, the titanium has a lower strain. This means that the change in shape is lower compared with the bone. So the difference between the two material make what is called micro strain of pathological overload and lead to the failure. That means that when I insert my implants in D1, it's completely different than in the D5 because the amount of the change, the difference between the change between, between the titanium and the bone is completely different, okay, than the D2, the D3, and D4, and D5. In D5, it is stress and when they apply the same stress, okay, the change between the titanium and the D5 will be so much. So the elastic motor of elasticity must be considered an important factor to understand why the failure is coming uh, uh, in the D4 and D5. And when the stress is lower, the micro, st micro strain difference is minimal and they remain in the adaptive window zone and maintaining in the, in the load in the lamellar bone around the implant, that means that it is solvable with no failure, like in D2, D3, or D1, okay? This is very important to understand this, okay? The bone implant contact. Bone implant contact is very important to understand that. that Bone implant contact uh, is uh, percentage is significantly greater in cortical bone than in trabecular bone. What's, what, what is the impact of bone implant contact? When I, uh, uh, the stress actually, as we mentioned, stress is equal force per area. When I have the area in contact with my implant is greater, which is coming from the more dense bone. For example, in D1, I have more contact of bone related or contact with the uh, titanium, okay, implant. So it means that I have more contact with the implant. I, I have less, uh, less stress. It means that uh, I am away from uh, I am away from the failure, okay? So it's very important, and the bone density is very important and factor to consider because when you have 
a more dense bone, that means that you have more BIC. When you have a less uh, uh, bone density in D4 and D5, it means that uh, you have less BRC. Okay, so you are will face a problem. So you can see here the difference between the bone or implant contacts. Uh, 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 the greater the implant surface area is required to obtain similar amount of bone implant contact in soft bone compared with the denser bone quality found around the anterior mandibular implant. That's why actually we must consider and we must know that the in the and we will talk about that in the in, in the in the coming slides. And the implant suitable for the D5 actually is the, must be different than the implant suitable for the D1. We need more surface area. Okay. We move, we need the special design for the implant inserted in D4 and D5. Okay. That is, is, that is very important for us to understand this. So the, uh, the third uh, point, which is very important, is the st stress transfer. This collective factor is the BIC, um, implant pore contact, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and the elastic model of elasticity is very important to understand for the transfer, the stress transfer. Because the stress, when the load is applied in the implant procedures, the stress almost control uh, in the bone are different of each bone density, okay? In D1 bone, the highest strain are concentrated around the, the crest, and the stress in the region is of lesser magnitude, okay? In D2 bone, when we have the same load, when we have the same load, sustain a highly greater crystal strain and the intensity of the stress extended further epically around or along the implant body. In D4, example, greater crystal strain, magnitude of the stress on the implant proceed far in the epical uh, area along the implant body. This means that and that D1 is completely different than D4 or D5 because the stress can be extended to the whole length of the implant in D4 and D5. That's why it's very important to, to, to understand this point, to, over, to, to think how to over that in the manipulations, in the design of the implant, in the wave insertion and everything. So that's why we, 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 we that's why we must understand why we have such type of failure in the in the, in the compromise side of the D4 and D5. Actually, we we we, we must speak about the successful implant uh, therapy. Successful implant therapy depend on uh, uh, main three factors uh, because we have a failure. So we are looking for successful implant therapy. The main component of the successful implant therapy is the operator, the existing site, and the implant system. If we go to the operator, the people dealing, the dentist dealing with the, uh, the implant therapy, we classify it in the implant user, and the implant user, and the implant user. Everything changes from one to one. Because this is the influence factor of the operator in the outcome of implant dentistry. If we look for the implant user, this is representing the phenomena or the, what is called the implant user. The patient is coming in one session, the first is visit, you're doing four implants in the same visit, in the first visit, okay? And they, uh, this is after one week, uh, is suffering and they have a problem. We can go too far uh, deep to see the X-ray. Okay, the dentist just wanted to insert the implants. You can see here we have a big granuloma here. He afraid that he just wants to insert two implants and not restored. They don't really compromised. You can see a lot of. Uh, as for this year, 
to influence here. So this is the character of users. Just wanted to use an implant to uh, using it without any treatment plan, without any evaluation of the situation. We even here inserted the implant in the mandible, but after one week, he coming with one implant in, in his hand, and a few days later, we starting to open to, to, to save this uh, condition and to remove all. You can see how much is that uh, uh, granuloma in this uh, site and we remove the implants. This is uh, uh, a type of uh, uh, users using the implant, the implant user. The second category is the implant placer. Implant placers, you can do the implant. They can insert the implant. They can finish the implant final restoration, but without any correct uh, a, a full uh, evaluation or understanding the concept of the, uh, to have an implant with a long uh, uh, outcome or long uh, uh, term uh, uh, outcome. Okay, so you can see how much uh, uh, implants are there. Patient is coming, is suffering from this gray. It's weakened by, as you can see the X-ray, the tomography is. So almost no bone on the back hand side and even touching the root of the, the primitives. The other category is the implantologist. Actually, we, we, the implantologist is very, very few in relation to the implant user or implant placer. That's why we, uh, we still have a lot of challenges, okay? I just give an example for the implant regions, the concept, okay? Implant regions, this is a big challenge. Patients coming from oral, uh, this was oral enter communication in this side and also in this side. Oral enter communications, uh, I, he left a root here and the, the patients coming suffering from the, uh, the uh, during the washing in the mouse, have uh, water coming from his nose and uh, we can imagine a lot of procedure do it. This is the implant just and deal with that as is the final restoration, seven year full up for that, that side. The implant just, they at least allow the protocol, how to manage the case, how to develop the implant site, how to select the appropriate uh, good suitable implant system for that, uh, how to make a perfect restoration and long lasting. So we have a challenge even for the operator because the different type of operators make uh, the challenge present forever, okay? So if you go to the another point, which is called the implant system, the implant system actually many, 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 many points can be discussed in the implant system. Implant design, implant surface uh, manipulation. Actually, uh, I, 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 I can take uh, hours to, to speak about the implant system of different types and so on and so on, but we will go fast in, the, in that uh, uh, implant design is very important to consider uh, uh, because different design is not suitable, is, uh, in one design not suitable for all bone quality, okay? Different design must be uh, 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 provided for different quite Surface treatment is the same, okay? And the manipulation, the way of manipulation of the dentist to insert the implant. So I will go fast in this because this is very important uh, to know it. We don't have uh, enough time to go in every point in depth. But later, this is speak about the D4 and D5. What we need from the implant system, actually. Uh, uh, if we back, to, uh, to, to what we discussed before concerning the, the, uh, D5 and D4. We need something to respect the biology and to enhance the biology. First of all, the implant is consists in those three parts, okay? Each part have a definite, uh, 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 dif have a definite, uh, have a definite role in the definite uh, place, okay? So for example, the D5 and D4, we recommend the implant which have the, the uh, self-penetrating, the this time 
of design, that it takes some self penetrating. Okay, so and at the same time, the type of the threads, the V shape threads, is very important because it's uh, important for insertion B side. It gives a large amount of surface area. That means that we will able to increase the BIC and we can provide a primary stability, okay? The second uh, type, which is the type of threads in the uh, corner part, which is very important because if we go to the side, we can see, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, we can see in the, in the coming slides, what the importance of the understand the different part of the implant design because uh, each part of the implant design will serve a role in the treatment of the uh, uh, of, of the concept for treatment of emerging D4 and D5. Okay, so we will go fast in this. Okay. So the existing side. If we no, this is a substrate we receive the, our implant existing site, the bone and soft tissue. We have, uh, this is the main crucial two factors for us, the bone and soft tissue. If we go to the bone, existing site is affected by systemic factor and local factor. Systemic factor, we will not go in, in, the, in this, uh, this is not the, the topic now, but in, you must know that the systemic factor affecting the bone quality, the hormones, and vitamins, minerals, and disease, many disease affecting that. If we said all, all the systemic factor is okay, we must go to the local factor. Local factor, the site, and we have a mandible and the maxilla, the local factor, uh, we have a biomechanical factor affecting the site or the, or the substrate receiving the implant. We speak about the duration of the implant, uh, duration of eventual status, and we uh, 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 we speak about the tools loss, okay? If you go to the site, this is very important to know, a very important biological factor. We have a two different type, uh, mandible and maxilla, and totally different when we must understand that we insert our implant in the mandible is different than in the maxilla. The mandible, by nature, is a biology. Is it, is the, the particular bone in the mandible is a coarse compared with the maxilla. Why? Because the mandible is a force absorbing element. Okay, and the maxilla, the maxilla has a fine bone typically compared to the maxilla because the maxilla is a force distribution unit. It's designed to protect the orbit and the brain. That's why when we ask, this is a physiological or this is a physiological. This is physiological, this is the mandible and the maxilla. This is the nature of the mandible, okay? So, so we must consider, we must shift our brain to think about something we can modify it to solve this challenge, okay? If we go deep in the side, we must know that the bone therapeutically Trabecular bone is usually more denser in the crest and less dense in the head. It's very crucial to understand that when we insert the implant here, people are inserting the implant here, we are waiting for less dense bone here in the bifurcation. Okay, so we must have a proper treatment plan to measure this area and to know that the here is the course or more trabecular course and here is a less denser bone. Okay even in the mandible, okay? So if we, we continue to describe for the non-function side and the function side, this is very crucial, very important when extracting the tools that the patient coming without, uh, uh, without opposing the teeth, that means that we have, we have uh, uh, bones particularly around the uh, tools without uh, uh, function, less bone therapy, less dense if we can compare here and here. This is very crucial because 
if you are going to remove the, uh, the tooth and inserting the implant, you must know that you are waiting for poor bone quality, okay? Even if it is in the anterior region, okay? So the bone terabicular bone is much denser around the tooth, okay? Duration of the edentulous area. Duration of the edentulous area is very important and very crucial for us to understand that, okay? For a long time, Wolf stayed a very important statement for us and for all the older people must consider it because when we have any change in the form and the function of the bone or its function alone is allowed is followed, sorry, is followed by a certain definite change in the internal architecture and equally defined, definite alternation in its external conformation. So this is very important to know. Patient staying five years like that, eating in this area. What we are going uh, to see in the X-ray, we will found D5 bone, D5 bone, okay? because during this long time of uh, edential status and the patient eating in this site, there's a, a massive change in the architecture of the bone and in the bone quality and bone quantity, okay? Bone quantity reduced and bone quality until the early changes. So we are waiting with that with the D5 bone. This is very crucial for us to understand this. Okay. The other one, the other factor is the tooth loss. Tooth loss uh, after uh, uh, let give me exam, uh, give you example to uh, just to compare. This patient is coming with apical infection and the oral enter communicating in the sinus and you're supposed to, uh, to extract the first molar. Okay. You can see here that it's inside. Okay. So we decide to remove the tooth and we remove the tooth, we just we see the sinus. Okay, we uh, decide to augment and to occlude that because we have our anterior communications and we close, okay. We gain a D3 bone quality. Even if we don't have a, high, a good height, but we have a good bone quality. We can solve the height, it's okay, but the uh, we can see and we insert an implant, the short implants, okay, but we, this is the rule of the dentist, okay. In the other die, in the other case, we can see the same, the same tooth, the same condition, okay, have the same condition, okay, and removing the tooth and without anything, we have D5 bone quality and 4.1 millimeters. It means that, that, that to lose a uh, uh, tooth loss is very crucial for us to understand that tooth loss, you can change the bone quality, you can change the bone uh, volume quantity, okay? This is very crucial for us. So now, Actually, we, 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 uh, we, we, uh, we understand together that the bone quality is a crucial factor to understand how, how, we, can, uh, how, how we can understand together that we are facing the challenge because this is physiological and some we can make it by our hand, okay? So the concept of treatment, we uh, concept of management of that to solve this challenge, we, we have, we have uh, uh, four type of concepts, the triple C concept, which we develop this concept, the triangular concept, and the aggressive loading concept, and the leveling concept. I will go down. The triple C concept, which we develop this concept, which is very simple to understand. We just, uh, the triple C concept consists of two to a C type of, uh, uh, of C. Triple C, coronal C, and soft tissue C. What is the meaning of triple C concept? Treble C concept, we can uh, uh, see the case and we understand. This case is coming, a recent extraction, we leave, uh, leave, the patient is coming after six uh, weeks, 
uh, just uh, soft tissue healing, we need to implement what we learned before. Concerning the implant design, we needed to insert the implant, the specific implant, okay, to solve this uh, uh, to, uh, to solve this issue. We in, in the triple seal, we, did, we we actually inserted the implant without, uh, in this case, without drilling. We inserted biologically in the same way, or in the same rule, in the same tunnel of the missing uh, root, okay. But the, if we see the X-ray here, we have a good lens, we have a good wet, okay? But it is a compromise because it is just recent, okay? We inserted the implant, the main principle of the triple seal, that we inserted the implant exceeding the lens by from two to three millimeters without draining with a specific design, as we mentioned, v shield threads and penetrating so we can exceeding the apex of the root and at the same time we have condensation of the bone around and what it is is what is called apical seal so we don't make another direction okay so if we see this during the insertion okay and we have the Typical seal, we have a crystal seal, and we have soft tissue seal here with the gingival form. Okay, so we can see here, this is, if you see here, the amount of bone inside, this is post insertion, okay, and this is the final, you can see. If you compare this uh, with the canine, you can see it is almost the same level, okay, exceeding by from two to three millimeter, two millimeter least, okay. So we are just using the benefit of mechanics and understanding the biology without making more instrumentation or, or more manipulation to insert the implant. The same directions, the same. Okay, we can see another case to understand. We can apply it in a, a, a post extraction. This patient is coming with a root uh, and uh, it's a uh, field endodontic treatment. Very careful extraction. We can see the X ray, we can have a D5. Okay, uh, that is the case. We just uh, we don't have uh, 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 any resistance of the bone. We, need, we just need the bio drill. First uh, drill, and we inserted the implant the same, by the same concept, okay, to make expansion and the condensation of the bone and exceeding the apex by two to three millimeter, independent of the available bone. So you can see here, okay, this is exceeding the length of the central incision by two millimeters, okay, and this is a final restoration during the insertion and this is the final restoration. Okay. The case number three, we, put, we are receiving this case in the posterior, first, uh, first molar, as you open, you can see D5 bone. D5 bone, that means we need the special design of the implant, which you can able to, <coughs> to insert in the implant <coughs> without minimal drain, just the first drill, the second drill, and we inserting in the implant with wide implant, and they have the ability to penetrate and at the same time to condense the bone and have the ability to self-penetrating. So we increasing the BIC, we changing the bone quality from D5, this to do D4 or D3, because you're condensing the bone and at the same time, we have a good primary stability. You can see here. <coughs> okay. A final restoration. Even if it is shown, we respect the biology here and we lift here two millimeters. It's number four. 
you can see here in the posterior maxilla before these patients are coming with the loose bridge and uh, field endodontic treatment. Everything is removed and they have a healing gum, okay? In the posterior maxilla, we try to minimize the uh, procedure, not to open, okay? In case like that, you can do D4 and D4 and uh, compromised uh, here, a compromised uh, uh, lens. So we are starting to make it non-invasive bunch technique, okay? We are inserting the implant by the same technique, just first drain, second drain, the implant surface penetrating, condensation of the bone, elevation of the bone, we are changing the bone density, we are increasing the BIC, we increasing the first time condensation, okay? So we inserting the two implants like that, <coughs> okay? And you can see how much uh, bone here, and we exceeding uh, the length here by two millimeters or, or three meters, it depends on the D4 or D5. And this is during the insertion of the prosthesis final restoration. The other concept, which is not a new one, triangular concept. When we're dealing with the reduced maxilla, actually it's very important to understand that we must have a different way for insertion uh, of the implant if you, you insert more than two implants. Okay, in this case, you can see, to understand this, a loose bridge and we uh, uh, remove everything. And you can see here, the bone quality is D4, the in area, D3 in the first premolar, this is a native bone, okay, because the first one is the extraction of the extraction, D4, and D4. What we are going to do with that, we make application of the tri triangular application of that and the uh, triple C application, the same. You can see here, we, uh, uh, the same concept, we are using a bunch technique, okay, but we insert our implant not in the same line. This is very important and crucial to avoid the more stress and the lateral forces, okay? And we're using uh, the same concept of the treatment. So we insert the implants, okay? Here, and this implant is inserted is different than the two because this is the D3, you can see the in the X-ray. This is the situation here. It is triangular, okay? So you can see here, this is two implants. It's a specific for D4 and D5. And this is another implant because the same, uh, this is completely different because we are here in the three, and uh, in the D3 bone. That's why we have this, this BD1, so with an easy insertion, we don't need to make more <coughs> compensation, condensation of the bone. This is the final restoration. Post operative. The, uh, the, the concept of the, the progressive loading. This is very important to, uh, when dealing with D4 and D5 board because, uh, you know, uh, progressive loading is very important in the dealing with uh, uh, reduced maxilla or D4 or D5 because we have immature bone, we have a BIC uh, uh, is, is less than D, D1 and D2 and D3. That means that we have immature, we, we must give a time, okay, to make the bone mature. Okay, the progressive bone loading provides for a gradual increase in the occlusal load. Okay, separated by a time interval to allow the bone to mature and accommodate the local strain environment. Over time, progressive loading, it changes the amount and density of the inter bone. That's why in a reduced maxilla, it's actually, uh, this is I just advise, we, we don't accept actually to make immediate function loading in the reduced maxilla because we must have a time, a good time for healing a good time to have a gradual or progressive bone loading because that's my, that gives us 
the more lamellar the more mature bone around the implant, so it can long lasting out time. So the progressive noting, we do it in a good enough, enough time for healing. I give also the patient always of not less than four months for healing. And uh, I'm always making it temporary for one or two months and then final restoration. This is very for long lasting restoration. Okay. Leveling concept, this is very important to understand and this is uh, from our experience and uh, many people know, know the, uh, uh, know that, but let me, let me explain for you the leveling concept uh, uh, in, in life cases, okay? Uh, this is a story of a, my patient, it's one of uh, my very few patients, this patient from starting, this is a, a case to have an endodontic treatment in the first molar and second molar, and they have a problem. After one year, he uh, broke in, and they, you see here the situation, and this is which is uh, removed, and you make retreatment for the for the last one, and uh, uh, failed. Uh, we we cut it short. We remove all this, and we make an implants. Okay, but the issue here, after this uh, uh, 2020 and 12, sorry, uh, after one year. Patient is, uh, this patient is working outside, he's traveling a lot in different countries uh, due to his job, and he uh, has this problem. When you have this problem, you must consider something wrong. It's not only related to the person who is broken. It is related to another factor. It's another, it's, you have is some problem in mechanics, okay? See, and uh, after seven years, we received this X-ray from Thailand, he was working in Thailand, and he visited the dentist, and the dentist is starting to, oh, it's okay, it's, uh, we have a loose bridge, we, uh, I'm afraid to remove it, I inject some cement, he uh, injects uh, uh, some resin cement here, and uh, the patient is suffering. He's sending for me other x-ray, and this is an x-ray. So, he coming to, uh, last year, and uh, we just facing this. All this implant is coming out, and this is loose, and this is the reason cement inserted from here for now. The issue here that these implants should be long lasting, but they have a problem because in the, uh, during his traveling, he changes the restoration by other restoration, but he do not solve the problem by the restoration because he still has a problem. What is the problem really? Okay, and this is the situation. To understand the problem, we must uh, go to the story of B, my patient. This patient is coming with one of my users. He give, uh, uh, it's just insert. I don't know actually what is the treatment plan of this dentist who's inserted this implant in this position and two implants in this, in this position. The patient coming is suffering from the numbness here and because he had touching the nerve and we performing the implants uh, to remove, uh, uh, patient to remove this and to, to correct this. We removing this uh, and we insert uh, 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 two implants uh, and uh, we augment the site uh, at this time. Okay, and this is the final restoration, 2008. Okay, so this is the difference. This is the solution. This restoration is long lasting until now. The same implant, the same operator, the same procedure, the same site is in maxilla, reduced maxilla. And these have the problem. Why? Because the leveling. And when you're dealing with a reduced maxilla or D4, D5, please insert the implant in the same level because it is crucial for the uh, stress distribution. You will have the, the, the result for poor resorption around this implant and uh, loose of the uh, screw here. Okay? So even if you do every single long implant and everything, so you stay, stay for a long time, for sometimes, but at the end you will receive such condition. If you have in the, your restoration is some broken portion or some shape, the uh, uh, 
uh, restoration, you must uh, take care about that. Okay? Leveling is very crucial. If you do, if you, if you if you able to make it separate, it much better. If you don't have the ability to make it in the same level, leveling is very important and crucial in the treating or treatment of the uh, reduced maxilla. In conclusion, actually, I would like to say there is a, a successful implant therapy depend on the harmony between the operator and the implant system that can respect the biology of the implant site. By this statement, actually, I will finish my uh, presentation. I hope that I send some messages uh, and I uh, highlighting some points so we can uh, together share our experience and I am also happy to receive uh, any comments, any questions are welcomed uh, in my email, uh, die at Bon Institute Info. And I actually happy that we are together sharing some experience today. And we, uh, uh, we, uh, we add some information uh, together. Thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for to be uh, together. Dr. Azef, thank you for a fascinating talk. Um, if you'd be so kind, we have a few questions from some of the people who've been listening. Uh, first question comes from Dr. Anwar Ashraf. And Dr. Anwar would like to ask, how much bone density is required for dental implants? Uh, how much? Is, uh, is it really, it's... Uh... We, we, the question, I, I actually, I, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, we cannot say how much on density. Okay? We can say uh, we must respect the biology uh, of the uh, implant uh, site. Okay, if we have a challenge in this site, we must uh, know how to change the bone density in this site. How to improve? Because we have two factors important for us. The bone volume, if the volume is less, we can increase it by different techniques. Augmentation, splitting, spreading, whatever, okay? Bone density, it's another ratio because we can change our salt how, uh, for concerning the implant design, the width of the implants, the length of the implants, the, the, uh, the coating of the implants, all these factors must be considered. The manipulations, okay? Uh, all these factors must be considered in, during the insertion of the implants. But we cannot say how much, uh, how much bone uh, density, okay? Because uh, 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 we have classifications. Uh, we, we can go to the classification and we can, search, uh, we can predict, okay? According to the read graph, we, we deal with the D5 bone. Okay, so we can uh, we we must prepare ourselves, our mind that we will do that. Okay, for example, if you have we deal with a bone, a bone quality D5, and we have a long span, it's much better to do more implants, long implants, wide implant because we provide more surface area, more BIC less distribution of the form, more table to receive uh, the stress, the uh, the table. This factor is very crucial to, uh, to, to uh, must be considered in the treatment of, uh, uh, of the D4 and D5. I hope that answers the question. Um, our next question comes from Rishav Thakur, and Rishav asks, how can we retreat the patient if their, implement, if their implantation has been done before? Actually, it's, uh, uh, this, this is a very important question. How do we complete? We must define, first of all, why the, implant, the last implant failed. Because this is a very crucial factor to understand whether, from where the failure is coming. The failure is coming due to a systemic factor or local factor. The failure is coming from the operator or from the host. This is of course, because this is where the, uh, the many factors considered in the failure. Okay? And after we define the factor of failure, 
we must uh, make a night and different scenarios. How we develop a biologically accepted implant site. And then we can, after developing the implant site, we can develop the, the, the developing a primary treatment plan. And this primary treatment plan can confirm it after the CT by final treatment plan, choosing the proper implant, the proper uh, implant design, the proper lens, the proper width, the, the proper technique of insertion, the proper way uh, of dealing with the soft tissue. And after that, everything will be okay. Thank you. Um, our next question comes from Dr. Sajid Hussein. And Dr. Sajid asks, in the case of D5 bone type, the bone will be extremely porous. Therefore, how can we gain sufficient initial stability as it would be impossible? Yes. This is actually what is the way we, we try to mention in the triple C in the uh, concept. In the triple C concept, as I, say, as I said, in D5, where we can be, uh, get D5? You can get D5 post extraction in the compromised site. Uh, have a, a long standing uh, chronic infection in an in augmented site uh, after sinus uh, elevation, in, in a, a, a site with the patient compromised uh, uh, systemically. Okay, and this is another topic, it's a large topic, we can speak a lot about that. But the most important issue is that uh, uh, it depends how many implants you want to, uh, to insert in this, uh, in this site. Every single implant, you must think about the implant design so we can using our concept that we insert our, our implant to change the bone density of the, uh, of the appropriate site. Before that, we must wave and we must treat the patient. If they have any compromised situations, medically that can provide D5 bone. This is actually a very important issue because this is another issue we can speak uh, later about that in another uh, discussion, another lecture. But many patients have a D5 because they have a, a lot of problem in the systemic way, okay? So you must uh, treat it and then you can go to, 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 to the local fact. So we develop what is called the biologically accepted uh, implant site uh, uh, by using the triple seal concept using the specific design okay, of the implants to insert the implant, have the ability to penetrate, to elevate, to condense the bone, okay? So you can change the bone from D5 to D4, you increase the BRC, you increase uh, 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 the length if you are available. So, and you, you, you can use it that's, uh, that's, uh, the appropriate uh, design for the final restoration to uh, have the restoration which permit less stress. You can make it narrow, not, or not using cantilever, even in the same uh, in the single one. You can use a narrow table restoration. You can use it, you can insert it in the implant more deeper in the bone, one or two milliliters to save the crystal bone. You can then say, uh, condense the crystal bone by the, the concept of, uh, of the triple C. All these factors can be considered. And we can see, we see in cases, we do uh, a lot of cases in D4 and D5, and we have a very successful results by this concept until now. Thank you. And one more question, if we may, Dr. Ataf, which comes from Dr. Ramnath Langavan, and yes. Dr. Ramnath asks, is achieving primary stability alone enough for the success of the implant, regardless of what type of bone? Uh, can you repeat the question, please, please? Of course. Um, so is achieving primary stability alone enough for the success the implant, regardless of what type of bone. Yes, 
uh, to achieve your primary stability is, is one of the crucial factors, it's very important, okay? To achieve a, uh, the primary stability, uh, 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 it's important because it is normal to achieve primary stability. Implant without uh, primary stability is questionable, okay? Uh, implant without uh, primary stability, especially in the post extraction socket or something like that, if you don't have a good anchors for five millimeter at least, uh, okay, lens uh, in the air. Uh, in the apical area, it is questionable because all, all the surrounding uh, uh, surrounding wall of the rest of the implant is not, we, we don't have a direct contact with the implant. We don't have a, a much amount of BIC, okay? Especially in the anterior region, we will face a resorption of the back and that bone because it, actually it is not a real bone, it is a bundle bone, okay? So it is uh, whatever the type of uh, the implant you use, Primary stability is a crucial factor for one of the important factor and the crucial factor for implant success or for SEO integration. If the other factor is respected and considered. Thank you very much. Um, um, so that's all we have time for for this session. Um, apologies if we haven't managed to reach your question. But if you do have any other questions for Dr. Asef, um, his contact details are on the screen there and you can also get in touch via us at membership.worlddentalcouncil at gmail.com so any other questions Dr Asef would be delighted to answer those please do get in touch. Um, thank you very much indeed Dr Asef for a fascinating session and um, we've all very much. much enjoyed that. Um, do join us again in an hour at 1 p.m UK time we will be hearing from Dr Tiziano Tealdo so we look forward to you joining us again then. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.